Hey, how's it going, everybody? Um, thanks for tuning in to today's video. Should be a uh, pretty laid back and casual for today. We're just going to be talking about the uh, temptation of Jesus in Luke chapter four. Um, so it's going to be actually pretty pretty cool. I'm excited for this topic, and uh, I feel like God's been putting it on my heart and and leading me in some cool thoughts about it. So. Just wanted to share some of that with you guys. Um, thanks for tuning in and subscribing to my channel. Um, if you enjoy this, in the, if you enjoy this uh, discussion, feel free to uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. So, well, with that in mind, let's get into the discussion. So, <clears throat> this is this is an amazing story. Um, Jesus is baptized in the book of, in the book of Luke chapter three, he's baptized by John in the Jordan river. And then after that, it goes into the genealogy of Jesus to further, um, indicate his messiahship and Luke's genealogy of Jesus goes all the way back to Adam. Um, whereas Matthew's goes back to Abraham and and then after the genealogy of Jesus, we have where Jesus is led into by, by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. And he is uh, brought brought out uh, outside of the city, outside of uh, civilization, into um, uh, uh, the wilderness, which is probably a barren, uh, barren land where he's very vulnerable. And he makes himself more, more vulnerable by fasting and by not eating food. And so he's abstaining from food and he does that for 40 days. And the 40 days signifies 40 years in the wilderness. Uh, we also have Elijah who in his ministry as a prophet was wandering in the, in the uh, desert for 40 days. And he actually ended up at Mount Sinai where Moses um, ended up... <clears throat> as well. And so it's interesting how a lot of the themes in scripture overlap. And obviously with the temptation of Jesus, the first theme that we uh, see overlap is, is in Genesis chapter three with the temptation of Eve by the serpent and uh, the fall of human beings from, from grace, from, from God and uh, because of their sin against him. And so there's a lot there's a lot to get in here into here with this video and so I'm hoping this video isn't too long but I uh I think that there, this should provide some valuable intertextual uh analysis of of this this biblical text in Luke chapter 4 um and and Luke chapter 4 is is ordered differently but I'm I'm going off of what is written in Luke chapter 4 than Matthew and and I don't think I think Matthew is it, the temptation of the devil is cor orderly, uh, excuse me, corrected, uh, correctly ordered. There we go. Whereas in Luke chapter four, it might not be, but I'm not sure about that. So, uh, but in Luke chapter four, the first temptation is that the devil says, if you are the son of God, uh, command these stones to become bread so that you can feed yourself and not be hungry. And his second temptation is to uh, to lead Jesus to a high place and to reveal to him all the nations and all the kingdoms in a moment and say that if you bow to me and worship me, the devil, uh, that you will receive all those kingdoms. And the third temptation was that he was led to another high place, which was the, the uh, corner of the temple. And the devil says that if you throw yourself down, God says in this psalm that he will command his angels concerning you and they will bear you up so that you don't uh, dash your foot against the stone. And and in each of these three circumstances, Jesus counteracts the temptations and the um, the false promises of the devil with the word of God. And so that reminds us of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 that says take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god 
And so Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, and we all know that Jesus is the Messiah, and so his understanding of the Word of God uh, is is superior to the devil's and his um, his spiritual uh, strength is is also superior. And so this temptation, we're hit with temptations as Christians, um, but the temptation of Jesus, it, it's fulfill it's its self fulfilling typologies and prophecies that our temptations don't fulfill. Our temptations aren't meant to be filled with all this, all this meaning that the temptation of Jesus is filled with, uh, as, as it, sh um, is reflecting what happened in Genesis chapter three and also what happened in, in the Exodus, uh, from, I from Egypt, the Israelites crossed the Red Sea. Um, and so interestingly, one of the, one of the symbols of a baptism is that a baptism symbolizes the uh the liberation from from captivity the liberation from slavery that the israelites came out of egypt and uh they they passed through the red sea and moses moses uh and and the the lord split the red sea together and the israelites were led through and uh and then they entered into um, the wilderness and that was where they began their 40 years of of wandering in the wilderness uh, and one of the first places that they came to was the desert of of sin which was uh, near probably derived from Sinai so it's in the Sinai desert and um, what what happened there was that they in the desert of sin the it's interesting that it's called, I think it's interesting that it's called sin. I don't know if it's necessarily related in the original language, but I think that that's definitely intended for us to understand that sin is, is related. The desert of sin is related to our sin um, as, as Christians and, and what we're delivered from. But in this desert, the, the Israelites get hungry and they, they forget all the miracles that God did and they and they start complaining about their hunger and so God gives them manna from the desert and that's the first thing um, one of the first things that happens when when they come across the Red Sea uh, and and then at Massa or Meribah they also test the Lord again asking Moses to uh, give them water and uh, Moses splits the rock at Horeb, right? And, and of course, in the New Testament, we know that uh, it's revealed that Christ was the rock from from what, which we drink, the spiritual rock. And he says to the woman at the, at the well in John chapter 4 that uh, whoever drinks this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never be thirsty again. And we also know in, in the book of John, Jesus calls himself the bread of life whoever comes to me will never go hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty and so so what you see is that uh the devil is tempting jesus in a specific way in the same way that he tempted israelites and uh saw them saw them actually give in to the temptation right and one of the next stories that happens after the exodus after Meribah and and the manna in the in the desert of sin is that <clears throat> when they leave the desert of sin they they come to uh the Amalekites and they make war against the Amalekites and Moses lifts up uh that's when Moses is lifting up his hands and as long as his hands are lifted up like worship uh they are um excuse me, uh, they are in victory over the Amalekites. And whenever his hands drop, uh, they, they start losing the battle. And so Joshua is lifting up Moses' hand because Moses' arms got so tired he couldn't lift them up on his own. And so they're, they're actually helping him lift up his hands so that the uh, Israelites could defeat the Amalekites. And that reminds us of another, the other temptation of, the second temptation of the devil because the devil leads Jesus up to a high place and says, 
He shows him the kingdoms of the world. And we know that Jesus is going to come and he's going to conquer and all the kingdoms of the world are going to, every knee will bow at his name, right? But in this moment, uh, the devil was promising him that if he bowed and worshipped the devil, that he would be um, given, he would be given uh, all the kingdoms of the world. And in my eyes, I think that order of what's going on after the exodus and then in the in the desert is symbolic of, of the order of these temptations and uh and so in all of the instances of of christ's temptations it's it's reflecting something that happened with the israelites and um but also reflecting ways in which we are tempted as christians as well and showing us that that we can endure through temptations, like it says in 1 Corinthians uh, ten thirteen. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape so that you may be able to endure it. So you can endure the temptation, and we, and we know that because our Savior endured it, and obviously he was tempted to a different degree and his temptation held more significance because it was fulfilling prophecy as well and so the third temptation when jesus is brought up to the top of the temple now we know what the temple signifies um perhaps the devil didn't at this moment but the temple signifies uh jesus himself it, it signifies his body because we know in john Jesus enters into the temple and he clears out the temple, the money changers, all the greed and all the all those disgusting things that were taking place in the temple. Jesus is horrified at it and and so he clears out the temple and when they when the Pharisees see him do this, they say, "Why why do you do this? What authority do you have to do this?" And and he says, um, "Tear down this temple and I will rebuild it in 3 days." And and of course they're their minds on the world and they're they're thinking he's he's talking about miraculously building the temple but he's talking about miraculously rising from the dead because the temple he was speaking of was his body so he's the bread of life and he's the conqueror um we know that in all christ in christ we are more than conquerors through him who loved us and uh so and and then and then he is the temple uh but Satan was trying to give him this easy form of being worshipped. And so the place on the temple where he was standing and led to, which was like likely the southeast corner of the temple, was significant as well because that was where oftentimes announcements would be made and uh, there would be trumpets that were blown for, for festivals and uh, various announcements. And so Jesus showing up on that corner and if he jumped off of that and was rescued by angels which perhaps he would have been um or maybe the deep devil was just trying to get him to commit suicide i don't know but uh if that happened he would have been uh immediately acknowledged his messiahship his his prophetic authority and so <clears throat> but instead what what do you see after this story with with the temptation immediately after this is when Jesus returns to his hometown and he is he he reads from the scroll of Isaiah and reveals that he is the Messiah who came to uh, set the captives free and he uh, is rejected at Nazareth and he says a, a prophet has no honor in his own own hometown and then he's almost thrown off of a cliff uh, right after this so he almost dies, but then, of course, he, he walks through the crowd and, and none of them touch him. And and so, yeah, I, I just see the, the uh, typologies of Christ showing up in, in the book of Exodus and, and coming into these temptations, and these temptations having theological significance, uh, and, and they, they likely have significance in the past but also coming in the future and so um just the the way that the word of god because man does not live on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of god the word of god 
created the world. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, through him all things were made. With him nothing was made that has been made. So we don't live on bread alone, but we live on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And the Word of God created the world. And we have the Word um, in the Bible, and the Bible teaches us the story of, of the Creator, of God the Father, and the Messiah, um, Jesus, who is the Son of God, who is, who is God in, incarnate in the flesh. So the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. And we have those words. Uh, and so the Bible is a supernatural book. It, um, it's self-authenticating, self-reflexive, you might say. And it, and it shows a story that is still ongoing, and, and the uh, story lives within us. And so the Spirit will oftentimes lead us to places in Scripture that we don't expect, and the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. And so we, um, we need to be uh, engaging with the Word of God and uh, following Jesus. Uh, otherwise, when we're tempted, we won't, we won't know how to endure the temptation. We won't know the way of escape that God is giving us because we lack understanding as to the context of temptation or even that it is temptation. We won't understand that temptation is, is something that's really happening. And so, um, because apart from, apart from God and apart from the Christian worldview, there's really no, no way to make sense of temptation being a real thing. Temptation can't happen because temptation signifies an objective uh, thing that's happening you, f to you from the outside rather than an inner subjective feeling, although it, it tempts us by knowing our, our inner desires. And so, um, so when you read that story, just recognize that not only is Jesus teaching us that, that we can endure temptation through the Word of God, but he's also showing us that he was fulfilling um, prophecies for all of humanity and also for for uh, Israel as well. And so, well, I hope this video was helpful for you out there. Uh, and if it was, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. God bless you.